Hello everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to set up and use MCPs for two popular database applications, Superbase and SQLite. Let me show you a quick demo. My cursor is connected with my Superbase instance, and there's only one table right now. I'm going to ask cursor to help me figure out what tables do I have and list out the tables in the Superbase instance. And just like that, we have cursor running an SQL query to get the table names from the Superbase. As you see, I'm using Windows operating system and I use Windows subsystem Linux with cursor. Let's talk about MCP installation. First of all, it's not very straightforward to use MCPs and it's especially not user friendly on Windows machines. But do not worry, and I'll show you how to install MCP step by step on your Windows system. There are generally two ways of using MCPs and I'll walk through both ways in this tutorial. The first way is to use a command to install MCP and the second method is to install MCPs on our computers locally. The Superbase MCP we're going to use is created by Alexander. GitHub repository has about 430 stars and just by looking at Alexander's GitHub contribution, you know this guy is legit. The instructions, however, is super long, but don't worry, let me condense that for you. Basically, there are two steps. First, we need to get some information from Superbase. I'm on Superbase website right now, and you can find this information by clicking on this connect button in your project. Scroll down to the last one, session polar, and just click on this to expand it. So we're going to need the project ID, which is this part right here and also the database password, and also the region name. So here I'm using CA central one. And that's all we need from Superbase. Step two, let's now head back to cursor, file, preferences, cursor settings, MCP setting, and then open up this add new global MCP server. We're going to enter the command we want to run to execute the MCP. And I'm going to post a full comment on the screen as well as in the video description below. It might look complicated, but do not worry. I will explain what it means and how to correctly set it up in your cursor. Because remember, we're on Windows, so we have to start with cmd slash c and then followed by the command we want to run, which is npx. Dash y means yes to all. And we're running a package from the Smithery CLI latest and we want to run the Superbase MCP server from Alexander followed by the config which is our Superbase project ID, the Superbase password as well as the Superbase region. The other two Superbase access token and the Superbase service row key they are optional and if you haven't already I highly highly recommend you getting the latest version of cursor which is version 0.47 at the time of this tutorial. The new version makes managing MCP in cursor much easier and it supports for environment variables as well. So how to get to this window? In cursor, navigate to file, preferences, cursor settings, and you will be taken to this screen, but then click on this MCP tab. And you want to click on this add new global MCP server. So in the new cursor version, Instead of adding MCPs on the UI, we can now directly update the mcp.json file to manage all the MCP servers. And this file is saved under C users, your username, and then the cursor folder. In this mcp.json file, we need to break down the same command into the following. The JSON file should always start with MCP servers. Then we can pass in a list of MCP servers. Right now, we only have one. For each MCP server, we always start with the MCP name. In our case, this is called Superbase. And the command is basically the same as what we showed before. So command and then run npx, yes to all, run this Smith3 CLI package. And we want to run Alexander's Superbase MCP server in the config we pass in the Superbase project reference. And let me show you where to get this. So in your Superbase project, this is the project. I name it MCP test2. But we don't need the project name. We need the project reference name. So you want to click on this connect button. Scroll all the way down to the bottom. Click on this view parameters to expand. This will be your Superbase project reference. So copy and paste that in. 
and a second parameter, Superbase DB password. This is the password for this Superbase database. This is not the password for your Superbase account. So in my case, the password is Superbase123 for this particular database. And the Superbase region, this is CA Central 1, which you can get from this section here. And as we mentioned before, the remaining two parameters, Superbase Access Token and Superbase Service Row Key, these are optional, so I'm just going to leave it blank. Save the file, close it, and we should see this dot turns green. If you don't see it turn green, then try to uh, press this refresh and a black window or a terminal window should pop up. Basically, it's running this command in the background. And we should see all these tools become available once the MCP server starts running. So these are the tools that our MCP have access to. And you will be able to find this command or the config file content in the video description below. Now, let's go to a chat window. With the new cursor version, there is only one chat window that integrates Ask, Agent, and edit mode. And you have to pay attention to what mode you currently have. For the MCP to work, it must be on the agent mode. Let me show you what happens if we have the, for example, the ask mode activated. So I'm gonna ask a question. What table, tell me what tables do I have in Superbase? And it starts to generate code for us to run to query our Superbase. That's not what we want because we're so lazy and do not want to do this ourselves. So let's switch to the agent mode, basically the same prompt, but switch to agent mode and rerun this prompt. Cursor agent now wants to use this MCP tool, so we'll give permission to run, run the tool. And sometimes it might be a little buggy with cursor and it might get stuck. So in this case, just stop everything and open a new chat window. And let's start with the agent mode basically the same prompt so it's still not working let me close down everything i mean uh, i'm going to just reload the entire cursor and this is the black window or the console screen that runs this mcp command behind the scene so now it's connected and let's uh, rerun that prompt remember to switch this to agent mode so give permission to run, run the tool, and now it works. Now we can query our Superbase directly. It's able to get all the tables, and I'm going to give permission again to let it run the public schema, and then it's able to find this MCP test table. Let me show you. So this is the table, the MCP test table that we have under the public schema. Now it's reading what columns are inside my MCP test database table, I mean. So now I have to mention another important setting. You saw me clicking through these run tool buttons several times, and I actually recommend doing this when you're just getting to know a new MCP server. But once you're comfortable, you can actually give cursor commission to automatically run these tools on your behalf. And the way to do it is go to file, references cursor settings which is the same settings and go to features there is this enable auto run mode it used to be called yolo mode and in the newer version i think they changed it to auto run mode so if you click on this and continue and you probably want to study all these options and there are some way to restrict what command cursor agent can run for example in the command deny list if you put in certain commands here it will not run these comments for you and as an extra protection you always want to check this to prevent the agent from deleting files automatically and now we have the yolo mode or the auto run mode enabled so now we can sit back and enjoy vibe coding back to the chat window we're going to say create a table name called cloud with the following columns model id model name model description then create three dummy records and put into the cloud table and because we have the auto run mode enabled so now it's going to run each tool automatically without our intervention it looks like it's still having some bugs so let's try to help it out it should run this automatically but it's not doing that okay so let us stop everything 
I'm gonna copy this prompt and I'm going to reload this window and open up a new chat. Make sure MCP server is connected, green dots, agent mode. So I'm going to try to split this prompt by asking it to create the table first and then I will insert some dummy values. Okay, so at first it encountered some errors and it tried different ways to create this table that failed again and then it's able to try a different way to create the table successfully so now we have the cloud table in our superbase let's go to superbase and verify that so here we go we have the cloud table and currently this table is empty let us prompt to create three dummy records so it says that it created the records successfully and let us verify that refresh and boom, there we go. There are three records that the cursor agent helped us insert into this cloud table. And all we did was just providing a prompt, nothing else. You see, Vibe coding is great, but be very careful and do not do this on your production databases. Very dangerous. Next, let me show you how to work with the SQLite database. And by the way, this is also on Windows. For this one, we'll be installing MCP directly on our computer locally. So it's a bit technical than the previous one. But once you learn this, you'll be able to install and use any MCP out there. So it's worth learning. The SQLite MCP we're using is directly from the model context protocol, the MCP itself, which is basically anthropic. And so we know it's also legit. This is their GitHub page, and I'll leave the link in the video description below. Now scroll down and click on this server's repository. And if you scroll down a bit further, you will see this SQLite MCP server. Feel free to click into it and read the documentation, but to be honest, it's not very helpful on how to use it. It says that you can use Docker to build it if you want to, but I'll show you another approach. And we'll still be using the same configuration file written on this official Git repository, but just a different approach. First of all, make sure you have both Git and Python 3 installed on your computer. I have Python version 3.11. I would say the newer version the better, and I cannot guarantee it will work on earlier versions. I'm going to download this MCP server's Git repository into my D drive and I'll copy this first part up to the servers, git clone, and paste in that URL. So now the MCP, all the MCP, actually all the MCP within the servers folder are now copied into my D drive. Next, we need to install a tool called UV, which is a Python package and project manager similar to pip. We're going to actually use pip to install UV. So pip install, uv and since i've already installed it so it's not going to do anything but on your end you will you will see the installation screen the process going and while that's installing you want to go back to this mcp servers um, mcp json file i'm just going to override this super base mcp because i found sometimes they are conflicting each other the agent had trouble identifying whether to use the super base mcp or the sqli mcp so for demonstration purposes i'm just going to keep one mcp at a time all right so now we have to change a few things essentially this one says okay this is the sqlite mcp and we want to run the uv command and for the directory, we want to update this to wherever we download the Git repository, the server's Git repository. In our case, this is in the D drive. So D servers, and we want to do like this, D servers. And we want to run this MCP server SQLite, MCP server. And for the database path, I am going to put a test SQLite database into the same D drive. So uh, it's going to un be under D drive as well. Let me just copy over the test database. So there we go. We have our test database. It's called uh, app.db. Let's change that. App.db. All right. So now we've done the configuration for MCP. Save the file and you will see this black screen pop up. We can close this and we can see the SQLite MCP server is activated now. So to be safe, I'm just going to create a new window and let's ask, tell me what tables are in the SQLite database. 
going to run that and it's able to see all the tables inside that app.db database. So it not only extracted all the table names, but also put some description for each table. That is neat. Let's ask it to create a table and we're going to name it liabilities. And we let it run the query using this um, create table MCP. And boom, there we go, table created. Interestingly, it even created columns that match in our other tables. That's quite interesting. Let us verify that liabilities table was indeed created. So we're going to go the C drive app. And there we go, this is our liabilities folder. We're going to view it. Yep, this is the liabilities table that they added. Let me ask the agent to insert five sample data record into liabilities table. So it's creating one user and well, it's done quite a lot. And okay, let us reopen the app.db database and let's see what it created here. So liabilities and as we can see, there are five sample records, liability records that the agent created for us. So that's all for today. I hope you find it useful and I'll see you in the next one.